As the state and the nation prepare to mark the 10th anniversary of 9-11, the North Carolina Arts Council has compiled a collection of poems written in response to the tra tragic events of that day. Tonight we bring you one of them as read by the poet himself, Joseph Bethanti. Katie. After the first plane, Katie phoned her brother. She was safe in another building. They were evacuating. DJ thought she had said, the other building, the South Tower, crashed into by United Flight 175 at 9.03, moments after the line went dead. That's all Katie's mother, my sister Marie, could tell me when I called. All we had to cling to, a single syllable separating another from other. Negligible, mere nuance, but in this case, the difference between escape and incineration. A seam charmed for her in the secret ether should she stumble into it to pass through unharmed. To cast wider our search, Marie and I tuned to different networks, watching for Katie among the fleeing hordes. They had talked the night before about what she'd wear to her client meeting, a brown suit, a black bag, her black hair was shorter since last I'd seen her. All day into evening, I peered into the TV, punching the cordless, Katie's office, home cell, office, home cell over and over, scanning faces unraveling diabolically like smoldering newsreels, smeared with hallucinatory smoke and ash. They came in ranks, wave upon wave, leagued across the avenues, the diaspora into John's apocalypse. Those still on their feet staggered, others lay in the street snarled in writhing weirs of fire hose. The firmament had been napalmed, orange plumed, spooling black, volcanic stench. Somewhere beyond the screen, inside that television, from which we all that day received like communion the new covenant for all time was my niece in her brown suit, a new haircut, her purse, outfitted for her seventh day in Manhattan, her fourth day at the World Financial Center, six days past her 22nd birthday. I would spy her, coax her back to us through the TV's lurid circuitry, into my living room, our perfect girl, my princess, she had lost her shoes, wandering the skewered heart of the future, finally arrived, black hooded, a fire, eerily mute toward the Upper East Side. A bus, a shared cab with an old man who befriended her, then barefoot blocks and blocks to her apartment on 89th Street, where she dialed her parents and announced with the sacrificial modesty of saints that she had made it home. And you can read all of the poems in the collection on the Arts Council's website, ncartseveryday.org.